Good day and welcome to episode 19 of Safety Talk with myself, Pandelia Lefariu, and uh, Gert Hendricks, our very own safety coach here at FTS Safety. Uh, Gert, so we've been uh, going into some different places. Last week we saw yeah. some new businesses and one of the themes that keeps on coming up is how to positively promote safety. Um, yeah. So let's, let's have a conversation around that. It's most probably the question that's been asked the most. And, 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 and just the fact that if you look in South Africa, that safety has got generally a bad reputation. Yeah. It just shows that it's a common problem throughout South Africa that companies battle to implement safety positively in their working environment. Yeah. And, yeah. But why? I don't because I don't think people are asking that question. Yeah, you see the, the I thing think is, it's often overlooked. If you if you ask this question to people and say, "Listen, you need to implement safety in the workplace," the most common thing is they're putting up posters and they're having safety uh, induction meetings talks, and doing all the tick box, tick tick exactly. Tick. And 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 all of that is in line with promoting safety. But I actually want to discuss it. I want to take it a little bit uh, away out and say we've got four points that I want to discuss with you guys and challenge companies out there to see if they are measuring up to these four points. The very first one that we are going to do is, do you connect to your people? Connect your people in in all ways or specifically around This is a very cool thing. I'm I'm going to challenge that guy. I want you guys to get out behind your seat, your desk, put your cell phone off and walk amongst your people and talk to them. Engage with them. Engage with them, show them that you are actually care. Because people, that f- people will first buy into the safety person before they will buy into the safety program. Yeah, yeah 100%. So how many of those, yeah, you're 100% right. How many examples have you seen of safety officers who are actually yes. too intimidated to go on the floor yes. and actually engage with people? To engage but is that not because often they are seen as, um, often if they are safety officers, not managers who are yeah. running it, they're often seen as just, if they're just compliance officers and not yeah. actually there to, to go. I know one of the things we actually were meant to discuss with Chris Bush was yeah. uh, was exactly that, with the safety officers. Yeah. That actually is a good idea for another episode, but we'll yeah. do that another because day. Because what happens with a safety officer, they give him a, a desk and an office, and that's wrong. Safety officer shouldn't have a desk. He should be on the field. He should be engaging with the people. He should show the people that they care, and that's your foundation of... Okay, oh. so connecting to people, whether you're a safety officer, business owner, manager, it's going out there, yeah. being amongst people, phone off, asking questions about their job, about how they're thinking yeah. about safety in their job, possibly even just connecting with them on a personal level. Yeah, actually, Just so that when you do go and have a conversation around safety, they're taking you a bit more seriously. I actually read this article about Napoleon Bonaparte where he said where uh, his success uh, is, 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 uh, was his recipe was for engagement with his generals. And the generals in their diary actually wrote that he knew everybody of his family and they were not even there. Yeah. You understand? But anyway, that's the first point. The second point that you need to do, once you have mastered engagement, you need to be able to empathize with them. Yeah, 100%. You need to be able to put yourself in their shoes. So, and, 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 and a good, good exercise for that is the stuff that irritates you and the stuff that gets you frustrated and the stuff that you just do not want to do is most probably the same thing for them. 100%. And again, that's also coming from yeah. engaging with them. Because if you're going there, yes. seeing how they're doing the work, maybe they've got the wrong tool for the dog job. Exactly. Maybe their specs are misting up. If you've got a bit of empathy instead of just being irritated, I issued the, the workwear yeah. and they're not using it. Yes. By engaging with the people, by having some empathy, you can actually realize that, hey, the stuff that I've issued is not comfortable or yeah. it's too hot in these conditions to wear that. So you can actually figure out and possibly solve a lot of the problems that potentially workers actually aren't aren't thinking about solving and they're, yeah. and they're, and they're, they're just there to get the job done and to stay out of trouble. And once you started empathizing with them, you can actually identify key personnel, the positive guys in your company and say, listen, come up with solutions. Yeah. And, they, and they become part of the solution and they can see that they are now suddenly part of a team. And that's how you create the, the team effort within your company. Well, that's one big point. They say if you can want to affect change in a business, get 11% of the people on board with you. That's Once it. you've got 11%, and hopefully there are the influencers yes. on board with you, it just starts snowballing after it's that. Snowball. So if you are connecting with the people, empathizing, yeah. trying to identify the positive people, yeah. those are all steps towards building a positive uh, safety environment in your company so Absolutely. so what else is there to consider well that will lead you to the next step the third step and that will be now you can start selling the benefits and the problem with management is they want to start with the benefits yeah 
Yeah. Not knowing that it's a path that you need to have, it's a program that you need to run to get to the benefit. Look, I know I'm guilty of that. Yeah. I often jump straight in because to the end game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, but look what are we going to get if we got all of this? Why can't we just guys focus? It's so simple. It's so simple. But obviously, yeah. I haven't connected all the dots along the way, so yeah. we're not taking people along their journey. Yeah, that's it. Um, now, just imagine if you interview somebody to come and work with you, and you're going to tell them, listen, this is a great place to work. We are, we are uh, a good team, and all of those. You sell those positive things. You sell those things you're not going to tell, sell them the safe working procedures and the procedures and policies and standards that you have drawn up you understand and we need to get once we've done all of our steps like connecting and emphasizing then you can only start selling the benefits and you will so give me an example of the benefits i'm going to be talking about when it comes to safety now suddenly you're part of a team you have work satisfaction you see the the benefits for yourself you want to be engaged your work standard rises quality rises and 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 i don't want to touch on management because management just will see my bottom line increases yeah yeah, but that's, that's not where you start. But those aren't the benefits we're talking about. So, for yes. example, I'm, we're going out there. I'm saying, hey, if we continue to get this right, obviously yes. productivity is going to go out. We're going to continue to get this right. Or if you are going to wear it, I'm prepared to invest in the better quality products. Is, is, are those kind of things that will come out? Is that what you? Those are the things that will come out once you those people that you are your your core team and say, listen, come up with benefits for us. Show our uh, uh, solutions with us, and then the benefits will come. Okay. But that brings us now to the most difficult part. It's easy to get to that section. But down the line, two, three years down the line. <laughs> Not even two, three years down the line. Yeah. yeah. How do you keep your team positive? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. You know, it's easy to tell the pe- show the people uh, videos of ampute- uh, legs that's been amputated and, and, and gross <laughs> videos and, and, and stuff yeah, like this. The scare tactic. The scare yeah, tactic. Yeah, 100%. But we We've need to get from a scare tactic, defensive mode, to a win mode. Yeah. And even uh, any sports team will know, you, if you don't yeah. get from a defensive mode to a win mode, you're never going to succeed win yeah. the, uh, the battle. Yeah, but and you know what? Right. I'm going to always empathize because I, the similarities in business and safety to me are, are they're the same thing as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Exactly. And we keep on going back to it in all of our episodes. Yeah. The project management, now that you're saying keeping it positive, my mind's racing on all the things. Yeah. Obviously with COVID and the effects on business, it's actually sometimes hard to keep things positive. Extremely. Especially now if you're going, you're doing your safety or you're doing your business and, and you're having a lot of accidents in the workplace or yeah. you've got people constantly not wearing their PP and all that. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to slip Very into easy. the negative and then start becoming reactive and issuing warnings and being all the way that that happens. So. Yeah. So, so that fourth point is keeping it positive is actually is, is, most it is the it's most difficult but it is the most important you've got exactly. to consciously say to yourself listen how am I going to address this in a positive way yeah because you get far better results out of keeping it positive and we can all agree on that I mean in yeah. every business when you're keeping it positive and you're moving that way everyone's morale is up when people's morale is up and uh, yeah. it works perfectly and uh, bottom line is it doesn't I, come yeah. just naturally it, it, it must be an active decision from management okay so again so let's go to that so how does management because this is where I always get down to because everything basically boils down to management and leadership yes I, 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 it always the buck stops there yes how do they consciously I mean are you literally having every day consciously asking yourself how am I keeping positive when I'm dealing with safety are you literally asking yourself a good that? place to start for management is to say what is safety doing for me today uh, what is safety doing for me today and if you can answer any, that question I, I then it's the same problem you have in your floor I need you to answer that question because I can't answer that question <laughs> it's a tough question <laughs> it is a tough question where's where the answer question. to it what is the answer to it well it will come for each company it will be different do you understand when you start maintaining it for example uh, and, uh, ask the question uh, again what is safety doing for me today what is safety doing for me today now just in, keep in mind when you can start asking that question you're no more defensive you're now in positive you're creating a win but I can't answer that question you know yeah. that I can't well, is that, have I got a problem we, we've, we've, I'm like, I can't tell this. Uh, so what is, what is safety doing for me today? So what is safety doing? Right? Yeah. Safety is protecting my people. Protecting, well, safety protecting my, my, myself and my work environment. My work environment. Safety okay. is, is, is keeping us compliant. Keeping us compliant. Making sure I can go back to work. But more than that, you will see each company, and we, we, we've, we've spoken to a lot of safety uh, yeah. managers in the past, and a lot of, uh, the biggest success that we have seen is remuneration. Yeah, 100%. Even if it's thinking just boils down to, I'm going to get 10 rand of it. It's recognition and remuneration. Absolutely. We always keep on going. At, I don't know if we're going to mention it on air, but... Um, 
yeah, so that the best system we saw was a company that actually rewarded and remunerated yeah. reporting near misses. Yeah. So if an individual managed to come to the company and go, hey, I almost slipped here, yeah. okay? And because that uh, there was oil on the floor, yeah. he reports it and he, and he provides a solution. Yeah. As long as he, every time he did that, what, they gave him like 50 bucks and if you did yeah. four or five and you provided the solution and implemented the solution in, in one year, in one month, they got like a 500 rand bonus, Yeah. okay? But as a result, the money that they gave, they paid a lot out at the beginning, but suddenly yeah. it was harder and harder for the people to find these near misses. And, and they put everything dropped. in place and their losses dropped, yeah. their injury rate dropped, their cost um, yeah. of uh, injury uh, rate uh, in de declined, and the COIDA claims came to almost zero. Um, yeah, so it's actually, I suppose, and that is keeping it positive. That's keeping it positive. That's keeping it positive. Where you want to do it. So what is my safety doing for me today? What it's is saving me. Saving me time and making me money <laughs> in exactly. a system like that. Well, well, you see, you're thinking on management level. I, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're actually talking even from the person that it needs at, to be on the floor at each level. level. Yes. Level. Okay. All right. So let's let's recap yeah. now. So if we want to promote safety positively in a company, number one, you got to connect to your people. Exactly. Number two, you got to empathise. Yes. Number three, we got to sell the benefits. Absolutely. And number four, and most importantly, and it makes sense. You got to keep it positive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so I think that's great. And that's your roadmap. Your roadmap for a safety culture. That is the roadmap to safety culture. That's it. That's a different one, but there's lots of ways to safety yeah, culture. Yeah, there's a lot of ways. I like that one. Uh, if you like what you see, please like us. Uh, when you're watching it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, hopefully LinkedIn sometime soon, uh, please follow us. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us either here and we'll get back to you or get onto our webpage and our contacts page and that's probably the best place. Thank you very much and have a great day.